Good morning. How are y'all doing? Good morning. Look, we ought to be shouting. It's Thanksgiving week. This is my favorite time of the year here. I tell you, I love Thanksgiving. We, uh, I hate that we kind of skip over Thanksgiving and go from Halloween to Christmas. Kind of upsets me because we've got so much to be thankful for. Uh, man, to be able to sit here this morning and going to be in for a treat in just a moment. You got some puppets that are going to show up on the scene, so you're in for a treat as they get back here and get ready, but we'll go through announcements. It's good to see each and every one of you here, especially if you're visiting with us. If you are visiting with us, we're so delighted to have you, and pray that if you can find a visitor card somewhere around you, uh, that you would fill that out and let us know so we can have a record of your visit. But if you got a bulletin and you want to look at, uh, at the announcements this morning, uh, we've got Wednesday, November 22nd. Only thing there's going to be Wednesday, November 22nd is prayer meeting. That's the only thing that's going to take place. All the children and youth um, uh, organizations will not meet on the 22nd. It'll just be prayer meeting. But youth and children, if you want to show up that night on the 22nd, you're more than welcome to come into prayer meeting and be involved in that. Uh, you can see in your bulletin, nursery workers need it. Uh, there is a sign-up sheet in the foyer, uh, and that's for the littlest ones, uh, like babies to whatever whatever age it goes to. I think it's like four years old. So uh, you got a children and preschool Christmas party on December the 9th. Going to be at Brother Danny Welch's at 4 o'clock. And they says you need to dress warmly because it may be kind of cool. So... Uh, We've got a youth fundraiser that's going on too, actually. Poinsettias and t-shirts, if you'd like to see that, see any member of the youth committee or youth. Winter Extreme on the 26th through the 29th, that's when the youth will be going to Gatlinburg for a youth worship conference. You got a note from the bylaws committee, and then also uh, the Thankful Project. That is uh, a thing that the GAs are doing to collect Bibles uh, to put in different languages. And what a blessing that is that we can take $5 and have a Bible translated into another language so other people around the world can hear uh, the good news of the gospel. So, so thankful for that. Uh, if you can uh, be a part of that, that would be great. Also, uh, you can see you can subscribe to the Baptist uh, record, uh, and they'll tell you how to do that there. Any other announcements that we need to? Yes, ma'am. Children's Choir at 430, because that's coming up quick, December the 17th, I believe. Uh, and the adult, 4.30, is that correct? Adult choir practice at 4.30, getting ready for their Christmas program as well. After church, we need help loading the Operation Christmas Child boxes onto the big moving van. So if you can give us just a few minutes of your time, Miss Lori, how many did we end up collecting? Okay, so 3,780. Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. A lot of lives will be touched just here uh, through Simpson County, so we're thankful so much for that. Anything else before we go any further? If not, uh, today's Sunday school was 122, last week was 110. Today's offering $1,500. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, it's a blessing to be in your house this morning. We're so grateful and thankful for everything uh, that you've blessed us with, Father God. But just to be able to fellowship and to be able to hear your word proclaim is just such a blessing. And I pray that you would just help us to absorb everything that's being uh, said and done here today, Father God. And hopefully it would be all to your honor and your glory. And I just pray that um, your will be done in this church and in our lives individually. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so as you can tell, we got a little bit different setup up here today. So over the last couple of weeks, or a few weeks, months, uh, we have reignited the puppet ministry here at Corinth with some of our kids. Um, this is something that I grew up with, as well as Brittany and many of you other members here who've been here a while. Um, and the kids were so excited to get that back started and get involved with it. So really quick, kids, can y'all pop up, kind of show, say, hey, who's, who's participating in the puppet ministry just just you not your puppet your you your person 
and you can't see her, but Brittany is down there <laughs> holding a microphone. There we go. All right, good deal. Um, but we appreciate all the support in doing this. The uh, kids are learning a lot, experiencing a lot, but um, setting up a really good foundation for a great ministry. All right. and I have been talking about Thanksgiving coming up and what it means to be thankful. So, Bailey, is Thanksgiving the only time that we should be telling what we're thankful for? No, we can show we are thankful every day. Every day? Yes, in 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18, it says, Give thanks in all circumstances. And in Philippians 4, 4, it says, Rejoice always. And in Psalms 107, 1, to give thanks because God is good. So let's get this straight. The Bay in the Bible, it says to rejoice always, pray continually, and give thanks in all circumstances, meaning on a daily basis, to thank God for all he's done for us? Okay, so let's start practicing now with everybody here and tell them what we're thankful for. I know that I'm thankful to have friends like you to help show me how to share God's love with others. And I'm thankful for the yummy holiday food that my mom makes that is so good. Lord, please help me not to eat too much, though, and get a tummy ache. I'm thankful to be a pastor and to be in this world today. I'm thankful for my family. I'm thankful for all the teachers. I'm, I'm thankful to play basketball. I'm thankful for my milk bones. Cucumber. I'm thankful for cat food and fish. I'm thankful for my grandchildren. Wow. <laughs> Sounds like we have quite a bit to be thankful for every day. So what has God done in your life that you can be thankful for today? The music. Next Sunday after service, GAs will be at the exits to collect money to buy Bibles. Five dollars each for a Bible. Thank you. I don't know how they got them all stacked behind here. Do you? One other announcement that we did not make. Uh, uh, today at 2 o'clock there will be a graveside uh, service for Mark Sullivan. And uh, y'all may not know him. I don't know him personally, but Miss May Catherine Lee, uh, it's her oldest son. He, uh, he was on our prayer list Wednesday night and he passed away. And so they're bringing him from, I think, from Gulfport. And he would be buried out here at 2 o'clock. And I think that um, some, of the lady, some of the ladies are fixing some uh, refreshments so that they can have a place to come and meet as a family after it's over. But be in prayer for that family. Uh, Mark Sullivan is his name. 
Now, for our, for our fellowship song, let's sing a good Thanksgiving song. He has made me glad, 579. 579, I will enter in his gates. This is scriptural, y'all. Let's stand as we sing. Psalm 100, I know you memorized that song, that verse. I will enter in his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter in his courts with praise. I will say this is a day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Let's fellowship just a minute. Choir members, y'all come on up now. <coughs> you, can, sir, you can sing in a choir. We're not saying anything special. time today I'd look out amongst us and point to somebody and they'd say tell me what your blessing is but I don't have time y'all didn't have preparation time so we're going to all sing it and just remember that I might turn around here and say Charlie has the Lord been good to you this week and she would say yes he has 585 count your blessings let's sing it When upon life's villas you are tempest-tossed, when you are discouraged, thinking all is lost, <coughs> name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done. Do the fourth one. So amid the conflict, whether great or small, do not be discouraged, God is over all. Count your many blessings, angels Help and comfort give you to your journey's end. Count your many blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God 
I'll be the first to say a blessing. We've been praying for rain for it seemed like six months. And didn't God send some rain this week? Praise God. Let's give God a thanksgiving praise for that. Amen. And they tell me there's more in the forecast. So God is going to answer those prayers in his time as he already has. And God has blessed you in your life too. Although sometimes things happen in life. And uh, let's be honest, life is difficult sometimes. Life is painful Life hurts, but even in the midst of our pain, God is still good. Don't forget that. And there is always, always something to be thankful for. So let's bow our heads together right now. Let's pray and talk to God. Lord, we want to pause, and we just want to say thank you, Lord. You have blessed us in so many ways. There are many blessings in our lives that uh, if we were to try to write them all down, we wouldn't have enough room on a piece of paper or, or three or ten or are 50 to write down all your blessings but lord we confess that uh, we get so busy and we get so preoccupied with what's going on right at the moment that we forget and we're very prone to forget your blessings so lord we want to pause right now and in a moment of, of silence god first of all we want to pray and ask for your help in our time of need you know our needs every need in this church everyone individually lord we need your grace but lord we want to take just a minute and we want to thank you for who you are, for sending Jesus to save us, for eternal life, and for all your many blessings right now. So, Lord, it seems so, so, so uh, uh, meager and so small, but we just want to say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. When we hear the word sacrifice, what comes to your mind? Usually when we sacrifice something, we have to give up something. In this particular song, we bring the sacrifice of praise, 581. It just means that we're laying down our blessings, our thanksgiving to God for what he's done for us. 581, let's sing. We bring the sacrifice of praise. Thanksgiving song. Turn right over to 582. It's a real, real short song that we learned in Vacation Bible School. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Would you stand as we sing this for our offertory? <coughs> Let's sing it through twice. Thanks be to God for this indescribable gift. Thank Thank you, 
to hold on to us. Uh, when we can't hold on to anything and when people let us down and when it seems we don't have any strength, that song is a great reminder. He's still holding on to us. Amen. This morning, we want to focus our hearts and minds on the subject of Thanksgiving. I wonder why. It's Thanksgiving week, after all. The Gospel according to Luke, chapter 17, has a fantastic and wonderful record, a uh, true record of the healing that Jesus performed on 10 men who were desperately in need of a touch from God. And I think if I asked everybody in this congregation, that if you need a touch from God, if I asked you to show your hands, I believe every hand in this room would go up. Amen? Because we all need God's healing. We all need a touch from God. And I'm praying that today God will touch our hearts and our minds, our souls, way down deep with the subject, uh, the healing of thanksgiving. There is a healing that comes with expressing thanksgiving, understanding thanksgiving, and showing thanksgiving to the only one who deserves thanks because it is only God through whom all blessings flow. Amen? Now this record in Luke chapter 17, we're going to pick it up at verse 11 through 19 as we read together. It says, It happened as he went to Jerusalem that he, being Jesus, passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered a certain village, there met him ten men who were lepers, who stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices, and they said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. They needed a touch from the Master. When he saw them, he said to them, Go show yourselves to the priests. And so it was that as they went... They were cleansed. Notice that in verse 14. As they went, as they followed Jesus' word, they were cleansed as they went their way. They were healed. Verse 15 says that one of them, when he saw he was healed, he returned and with a loud voice glorified God, and then he fell down on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. Let me put that in plain Simpson County English for you this morning. He was a foreigner. He wasn't one of us. He was an outsider, and he was a Samaritan. And the Jews looked at the Samaritans as foreigners, outsiders, outcasts, but it was only he who came back to thank Jesus. So Jesus, verse 17, answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he, Jesus said unto him, Arise and go your way. Your faith has made you whole. Faith is a deeper healing than any physical healing that any of us could experience. And this morning my prayer is that your faith will be strengthened, that your heart will be prepared for the healing that Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving will bring. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you for this record of these ten who were healed by your power, by your authority. But Lord, especially today, we want to thank you for the example that was set by this one individual who saw that he was healed, who came back, who gave glory to God, and who fell down and gave Jesus thanks. And Lord, we confess that's what we want to do today. We want to see that we've been healed in so many ways. We want to see that we have been saved, and we want to remember what you have already done, and then we want to return. We want to come back to stop what we're doing, to stop the busyness of this uh, busy time of the year. We want to pause. We want to come back, give glory to God, and say, Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I pray if there's anyone here today that's maybe not done that in a long time. It's been a hard year, and I know it's been a hard year for so many people. This drought, there have been sicknesses, there have been disease, there have been uh, so many problems, financial problems, things cost so much more money than they used to. And Lord, there are those who've experienced great loss and great tragedy here with us today. Lord, today, we want to stop what we're doing. We want to come back to you, the one through whom all blessings flow. We want to thank you that we have the privilege to say thank you for what you have done. And strengthen the, these, Lord, today 
prepare our hearts for this season of thanksgiving. In Jesus' name, amen. There is a saying on the wall of our house, at our house, uh, and it says, there is always, there is always, there is always something to be thankful for. The Bible says, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. That does not mean that we give thanks to God for everything, because there are some things that are just evil. There are some things that are tragic. There are some things that are absolutely wrong, and we certainly don't thank God for those things. But what the Bible says is, in everything give thanks. What that means is wherever we find ourselves in our life, wherever we are in our life, we can find something to be thankful for. I want to give you some examples this morning. Have you ever thought, thank, thought to thank God for every uneventful day? The, the, the things that did not happen in your day, that you were not hit by an automobile and T-boned and lost your life or your limb. There are things that we don't even think about that God has preserved us from that we can give thanks to God for. We can thank God uh, for the rain that he has sent, and we thank God it was a slow and a soaking rain, and I thank God even for this thunderstorm that's coming our way, looks like tomorrow. Praise God. Amen. God is going to send the rain in his time. I heard about a man who was a, a working man, and he had packed his lunch and he was on his way to work, and in the uh, snow of the city where he lived, his uh, shoe laces got untangled, and he tripped, and he fell, and a hungry uh, dog came along and grabbed the lunch out of his hand and ran off with it through the snow. And the man got up and brushed off and said, Well, Lord, I thank you. I still have my appetite. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you can find something in everything to give thanks to God for. Charles Spurgeon one night, after preaching God's Word, Charles Haddon Spurgeon, the great preacher of Great Britain, was walking home from an a outdoor revival meeting, and on his way home, he was robbed at knife point. They stole his wallet and uh, left him in the cold. He got home. He got to where his wife was. She said, how was the meeting? He said, uh, it was okay, but he said, I was robbed. He said, I want us to stop right now and thank God. She said, thank God for being robbed? He said, no. First, he said, I can think of several things to thank God for. First is, they only took my money. They didn't take my life. Second thing is, I didn't have any money in that wallet to speak of, all right? And he said this, thirdly, I thank God that I was not that robber. There is always, always, always something to be thankful for. In everything, give thanks. Now, here were ten men who really didn't have anything to be thankful for in the world's way of looking at things. Uh, these men were lepers. Now, you and I don't have a lot of familiarity with the disease of leprosy. But it's a very real disease. It's been eradicated in most parts of the world. But there are still some places where there are leopard colonies who live today. Leprosy is a skin disease. It attacks the skin. It attacks the flesh. And in Jesus' day, there was absolutely no cure for it. And in the Bible days, in the book of Leviticus, uh, write it down. Don't turn there. Leviticus chapter 13, verse 45 and 46. Here was what the law said. The leper on whom the sore is... His clothes shall be torn, his head shall be bare, he shall cover his mustache and cry, unclean, unclean. He shall be unclean all the days he has the sore, he shall be unclean. He is unclean and he shall dwell alone. His dwelling shall be outside the camp. Here were men who had a disease for which there was no cure who had a situation for which there was no hope. They had been separated perhaps from their families, from their wives, from their children. They were separated from community. They were out of the camp. They were out of the city living in caves and in rocks, and they were living alone. And the only people that they could be around were those who had this same disease, a flesh-rotting disease. And over time, they would wake up to find that they were losing their fingers or their toes or their legs are even worse. 
and they would live the, less, the rest of their lives in loneliness, in need, and in desperate need for healing. I want to tell you today, it's a message that you and I need to hear. You and I have a common need today. This, these lepers, we may not have leprosy in common with, but you and I have those common needs. There are many of you here today, and you're struggling with a sense of loneliness, and you feel in a large crowd filled with people, you struggle because you feel so isolated and so alone. I want you to know today Jesus sees your need. He knows where you are. There are people here today who have a common need that, that uh, nobody else can seem to solve. There was no answers that these men could find at the doctor's office. There was no answers for what they were dealing with financially. Who could provide for their families anymore after all? A common need. And I want you to know today, Jesus sees your need. He knows exactly what you're going through. He knows your need. And they needed healing. They needed a physical healing that you and I, we pray, will never have need of to be healed of the dreaded disease of leprosy. And Jesus saw these men's need as he passed through Samaria and Galilee. And they lifted up their voices in verse 13, and they said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. They needed the mercy of the Master. That's something you and I have in common with these lepers. I remember the day I got saved and I received the mercy from the master at the age of seven years old. And if you're here today and you've been born again and saved and you know what God's mercy feels like because Jesus touched you when you had no hope, you were separated and apart from God, living alone in a life away from God, and God made a way through Jesus Christ and the cross of Calvary to bring us back to him. Amen? Amen. God is good. God wants to extend his mercy all the time. And it's a picture so of you and of me of sin and of our need for salvation. But I think it's interesting that while ten men were healed, only one came back to say thank you. While ten received the healing and the grace and the mercy of God, while, while ten received their lives back to them again, only one, this one Samaritan, came back to say thank you. Jesus wondered why he asked, were there not ten healed? Were there not any more found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And then Jesus had a message for him. Arise and go your way. Your faith has made you whole. I want to tell you this morning on the authority of God's word, there is a deeper healing that thanksgiving brings than any physical healing could ever bring. It is the healing of faith. It is the healing of trusting God, that it is God who is good, that it is God who can meet our needs, that it is God who meets our need and saves us and heals us. And when we express that thanksgiving the way this leper did, this healed leper did, then and only then we can experience the full wholeness, the full healing that God wants us to experience. So today, the message is this. I pray that God will prepare your heart and mind to experience the deeper healing, deeper healing, and the deeper joy that thanksgiving can bring. There are four lessons that I see from this grateful leper here today. And they're right there in the text, and all of them are in verses 15 and 16, if you'll notice it. It says, and one of them, when he saw that he was healed. That's the first step to experiencing the healing of thanksgiving. Uh, now, here were these ten men. They had been living alone in the rocks and caves. They finally cried out to Jesus. They didn't know if Jesus could save them. Obviously, they had some faith that he could save them because they cried out and asked for mercy. And then, as soon as Jesus said, go show yourselves to the priest, which was the way you got cleared of leprosy. That was the biblical way. Once you were healed of leprosy, you could show yourself to the priest. If they found no sore, no evidence of the disease, you could be proclaimed clean when you were once unclean. So Jesus says, go, show yourselves to the priest. Boom, off they go, all ten of them, running fast. I have no doubt. They were in a hurry. One of them looked down on his way, and he saw he was healed. That's point number one. We don't know from this particular encounter with Jesus 
whether these other nine did not notice that they had already been healed or whether they saw that they had been healed and kept going. Either way, the lesson is this, that you and I need to pause in the busyness of life, in the hurry of the culture in which we live. We need to pause long enough to take stock of what Jesus has already done in our lives. He looked and he saw that he was healed. He had already been healed by Jesus. He had already experienced the healing that Jesus pronounced upon him. He was on his way to be restored to the community before the priest, but he stopped long enough to see that he was already healed. We need to pause long enough and take stock of the power of knowing Jesus in our life. There are problems in our lives, let's face it, that are not yet resolved, and they may never be resolved in this life. They may never be resolved till we get to heaven. But I want to tell you today, if you're saved, if you've been born again by the blood of Jesus Christ, there's something to pause and to notice and to give thanks to God for. Amen. Look down and see that we've been healed. Yes, we still live in a fallen world. Yes, we still live in a world where people get sick and where people die and where tragedies happen every day. It's painful. But if we'll look, we'll see that Jesus has already healed us forever. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should never perish but have everlasting life. And Jesus has already healed us when we confess him as Savior and Lord, and we're already living forever in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, these old bodies are going to die, but our soul will live on forever, and one of these days Jesus is going to give us a brand new, a brand new restored body. The book of Philippians is the, called the Epistle of Joy. And if you're running low on joy today, it may be because you're running low on thanks. Philippians chapter 3, verse 8, Paul was able to write, he'd experienced great tragedy. He'd suffered the loss of everything, professionally, personally. His body was suffering. And he says, I count all things loss for the excellence of knowing Jesus Christ, my Lord, for whom I've suffered the loss of all things. I count them as rubbish garbage he said that I may win Christ and be found in him not having my own righteousness but having the righteousness of God by faith and then he said verse 10 that I may know him it's more important to know Jesus than anything else in this world to know Jesus and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death Paul said everything that I've given up everything that I've lost so to speak I count it as a gain if you write it down on the balance book of life it's better to lose it all and still know Jesus amen look down and see that we are healed Jesus has healed us the greatest thing in life is to know Jesus the Jesus who these lepers cried out to the Jesus who I cried out to when I was seven years old to save me he answered my cry and he answered yours if you're saved and if you're not Today, you can call on him and he promises he'll save you because today's the day of salvation. Amen. He looked down. He saw this, hit, this leper saw he was healed. Secondly, it says he turned back. He looked down in verse 15. He saw he was healed. Then he returned. He turned back. He turned back. He didn't keep going his busy way. He didn't keep going on down the road and say, well, that was really nice. I appreciate Jesus doing that. Once he realized that he had been healed, he had no choice but to stop what he was doing and return to the source of the healing. I think a lot of people in our churches today get saved and dumped, baptized, and then they go on about life as if nothing happened. And look, that's not God's plan for you. Every day that we wake up as Christians, we ought to be returning to the source of the one who saved us in the first place. Amen. Don't go on try to get find your happiness in this world. Don't try to find your happiness in these things. I know Black Friday is this Friday, and I promised myself I would never, ever, ever go there again, all right? Now, if you want to shop, that's fine, but you ain't going to find me there, all right? And I'll tell you something else. Thanksgiving Day, I'll be in my front yard frying two turkeys. If y'all want to come, come on, all right? But I'm not going to run this rat race because it's a moment of pausing and returning to the one who's blessed us with everything anyway. Amen. Return to the one who saved us. 
He returned to the source of his healing. When he knew Christ, he knew that without Jesus, he was nothing, that what Jesus has done for him, he must turn back, he returned. His options included staying where he was or continuing to the priests or go back to Jesus, and he chose the best. He went back to Jesus. I think every morning that we wake up that God has given us another day as Christians. The first thing we ought to do before we roll out of the bed or stumble out of the bed or pull ourselves out of the bed, as the case may be, is to stop and return to the one who saved us in the first place. Say, Lord Jesus, I want to thank you for salvation. I want to thank you for rescuing me. And I want to thank you for today. And Lord, I just want to come back to you one more time and say, Lord, I want to I want to live your walk. I want to live your way. I want to go and do the things that you would do. So Jesus, give me the strength to do that. We need to turn back to the one who saved us. Let me tell you something. The rest of the world can wait. All right? The priests were still going to be there as the ten were making their way. The shopping is still going to be there. The busyness of the rat race of this world is always going to be there. But don't miss the opportunity on a daily basis to turn back to Jesus and talk to him one-on-one. -on -one. Amen. There's a third thing that he did, and that is he gave glory to God. With his voice, the Bible says, uh, when he saw he was healed, that's point number one, he returned to the source of his healing, and thirdly, with a loud voice, he glorified God. He used his vocal cords for years and years and years. This man had been told that the only thing he could do when he saw people was to say, Two words, unclean, unclean. In other words, stay away from me. Don't come close to me. You don't want to get the disease that I've got. And now Jesus has changed his life in such a way that he's got a new song to sing. Amen. And it says he lifts his voice and he gives glory to God. And isn't that what God made our voices for anyway? To give glory to God. Every time this choir sings, every time a special is sung, every time we sing a congregational hymn, it's not to hear how good I sing or how you sing or how bad somebody else or I sing. It's about giving glory to God who gave us our voice. Amen. Lifting our voices in glory to God. Lifting our lives in praise of Him because after all, He's the only one that deserves the glory. These men didn't save themselves. This leper did not save himself. We need to use our voice to praise God. You know, we can use our tongue and our lips and our voice to bring forth good words to praise God and to build up other people. But we also have the capacity to use them like poison. And every day we need to make up our mind and we need to get our mind in gear ahead of that old tongue that'll wag and we need to get it under control and say, by God's grace and by God's strength, I'm gonna use my voice today to only bring glory to God. Wow, how different this world would be if God's people did that, like this leper did. He used his voice to bring glory to God. I heard about a, a, a king who had a couple of boys that were proven to be ungrateful, ungrateful boys. And uh, they would never thank, uh, they would never say the blessing before a meal. They would just come in and eat and go. And the king decided that he would teach them a lesson. So he one day he arranged for one of the beggars outside of the, the gate, the city gate, to come. And he brought the boys in, and they had prepared the king's meal, and everybody was sitting down to eat. And this beggar, ragged old beggar, came in and just gobbled up a big old bowl of soup, tuned it, turned it up and drunk the whole thing down, wiped it with his sleeve, grabbed some biscuits or cornbread or whatever kind of bread they had, gobbled the whole loaf, ate it, just walked off with crumbs off of his, off of his uh, coat, and he got up without saying a word and walked out the door. And you know what those boys said? They said, what an ungrateful man. He came in here, he ate our meal. He, he ate the king's meal, and he didn't even stop one time to say thank you to the king. And the king turned to those boys and said, you know what, God has given you all things. He's given you every meal that you've ever eaten. He's given you every dime that you've ever earned. He's given you your family and your life and a home, a roof over your head, and you boys are so ungrateful you don't even stop to thank God, the king of the universe, for that. And they got the point. We need to stop, and we need to use our voice for something besides useless words. We need to give glory to God every day to sing praise to God, to give glory to God, and to build up God's people. 
There's a fourth thing, a fourth lesson that this leper teaches me. I hope he teaches you, and that is in verse number 16. It says he fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. Point number four is this. In total humility, he gave thanks to God. In all things, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Humbly give thanks. It's one thing to walk by somebody and say, thank you. It's one thing for me to, to say to each to one of y'all, thank y'all for being here today. I know you could be somewhere else on a travel trip or a Thanksgiving meal or what else is going on. I know there's a lot of places you could be. Thank y'all. It's another thing for me to fall on my face at your feet and say, I want to thank you for what you've done. This man understood that the proper way to give thanks was in humility, humbly thanking God for what he has done in all things. Jesus, in the very next chapter, told the, the story of the Pharisee and the publican. The Pharisee went and prayed, and he, he, he lifted his, his head up high to the heavens, and he said, Oh, God, I just want to thank you that I'm not like this old heathen sinner right over here. That's not the kind of thanks Jesus is interested in. But the publican said, hung his head down low, beat his breast, his chest, and he begged for mercy before God. And Jesus said, that man went home justified and not the religious Pharisee. Thanksgiving requires humility. It requires us humbling ourselves, bringing ourselves to the reality of the point that we are. This man was nothing without Jesus. He had a hopeless future and a hopeless life without Jesus, but now he was healed, and he understood. He the only proper way to give thanks was in humility. Philippians chapter 4, verse 4 through 7. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Lift your voice to God. Give joy for God. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known to God and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Wow. What a package of Scripture that is. There is always something to be thankful for. There is always something to rejoice in the Lord for. There is always something to pray in humility and in prayer. Let our requests be made known to God. And there is always, in the midst of those prayers, something to be thankful for. And the promise of Scripture is here when we do those things that the peace of God, which you cannot explain, human speaking, the peace of God, which passes all of our human understanding, shall guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. And that, friends, is the healing that Thanksgiving brings. This morning, I want to ask the question that Jesus asked. As one stood before him saying, thank you, Jesus. Jesus asked, where are the other nine? This morning, I'm going to give a time of, uh, for you, for your family, to come to this altar and to pray simply to thank God for what he has done. To see that you are healed. To return to Jesus, the source of our healing. To use your voice in prayer to thanks, to give thanks unto God, and then humbly, as you bow before Him, you show Him how much you love Him, how graceful, graceful, grateful we are for what He has already done. It's a, an altar call for thanksgiving. And if you have any other decision to be made, I'll be down front, and I invite you to come. Maybe Jesus has spoken to your heart today. And you come in faith, and just like those lepers who followed Jesus' word, you will be saved when you call on Jesus' name. You come and be saved. Others have other decisions to be made here today. You know what they are. God knows what they are. Don't worry about everybody else. But all of us, the other nine of us, every one of us, we need to be like that one Samaritan leper. Stop what we're doing. Return to the one who saved us and give him the thanks that he deserves. Lord, would you take this message, bless it, Lord, 
to each one's heart and life where we are. We thank you, God, that no matter where we are or what we're going through, we can still stop and say thank you. Lord, I pray that you would put in our hearts that kind, that kind of thanksgiving, a humble thanksgiving, to know that even though things in this life are turned upside down, you are still God. You are still on your throne, and you're still in the saving and the healing business. And like this leper received the word, we can go our way knowing that our faith, our trust in Jesus, has given us a greater healing than any physical healing we could ever experience. So, Lord, I pray that will be a reality now in this time of invitation and in the days ahead. In Jesus' name, amen.